Hi and welcome back to the channel. So it's the late November here and um, came down to the boat to start doing some of the uh, winter preparations. So first thing is that we're gonna inspect the bow thruster. So before we get started this is the bow thruster install and if you haven't done so already you can uh, check out the install videos I did uh, before this season. It's gonna be a link right up there and also in the description below. So I'm thinking for today I am going to check out the uh, the mounting torque on the actual motor on the motor bracket itself. Uh, so I think I'm gonna take the motor off, check the um, there's like this little coupling down here. Check how that looks like. The uh, gotta check the gear leg, also torque wise how it's sitting in the tunnel, just to be sure nothing's uh, nothing has changed. So I also have to do a bit of change to the uh, wiring down here, and uh, that's due to one of my uh, subscribers. He actually pointed out there was a slight flaw in the uh, wiring I did, uh, and that is that the um, the fuse here. I didn't put that uh, before the main switch. The perfect solution is to uh, have when you have your positive, it's going to go directly to the fuse, then to the main switch, and then to the thruster itself. I made a brain uh, short circuit during the uh, the last days on the install. So first thing first, that's going to be uh, taking off all the cabling here, so I don't actually fry anything off, and then we're going to take off the motor and check that out. Cables are now disconnected, and I shall attempt removing the motor itself from the bracket. Okay, they're still quite tight in the beginning, so that's good. It didn't vibrate loose during uh, during the season. Looser, not loose, then we probably felt it. Look pretty good. Doesn't seem there's any wear down there. I'm just gonna put this off. So that's just the, uh, the signal I put there. And this one still spins nice and freely. So let's just check the. This is still tight. Yeah. Hmm. I expected this to be maybe just a bit loose. So the torque spec is set to uh, 12 Newton meters. So let's just check. 12. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, also good. I can just give you a brief explanation of this uh, mayhem of wires and why it looks like this. So this is the uh, relay for the electric winch. It sits up there, of course. And uh, down here you have the bow thruster battery. And um, so the way it's wired up now is that last season when I did the bow thruster install, I didn't want to mess too much around with the uh, with the existing systems of the boat. That means you have two beefy cables running uh, from here down to the um, to the battery bank, and this one powers the uh, winch up there. And the battery up here is only charged using this. Victron uh, DC DC charger. So this one just piggybacks off the uh, the two fat cables here, and can charge the battery here with um, I think it's like nine amps. So it's it's quite slow, but it's just maintaining the uh, the charger up here whenever you want it. And by this, then we don't have this battery is not connected to the to the rear battery, the main main bank, uh, because you have quite a long distance between the two and. This one is going to be loaded quite hard on the with the bow thruster, so you're going to have like this imbalance. That's why I choose to have like two separate systems um, like this. But the downside is that um, when I'm operating the winch here, then of course I'm drawing a lot of amps all the way down to the main bank. And uh, I changed the battery last year. I'm going to show you to like this uh, gel type instead of having your normal uh, starter batteries. Um, and it's not really ideal to draw like that many amps of that one. So my plan is to make this battery up here, power everything like the uh, both the uh, the bow thruster and the winch, 
and then um, I need to figure out how to charge this battery if I'm gonna stay with the DC DC charger solution or I'm gonna do a normal like this battery isolator uh, thingy uh, yeah the only thing I'm a bit worried is about is that um, that the relay there for the um, for the winch I think it has to get like 14 point something volts to activate it meaning that you have to have the engine running to uh, to actually use the um, use the winch so I have to check this out before I start doing uh, too, too much work uh, yeah so uh, now I'm gonna reattach the uh, motor there for the power thruster and redo the cabling so we have the famous uh, fuse sitting actually where it should be sitting and not, uh, not like it so now we have to of course the negative that's the same and then we go on the uh, positive side of life here positive I didn't reattach it yet but it goes up to the fuse and from the fuse it goes to the switch and from the switch it goes back to the thing there yeah so uh, thank you very much Torsten for your comment there on the uh, in the power thruster uh, install uh, video uh, where you found this little mistake I did in the cabling so hopefully now I'm not gonna have any um, potential issues with the fires or interesting stuff down here. So that's one more thing ticked off the list and now I think it's time for a coffee. So that was the first little uh, task done in this winter with the uh, bow thruster checkup. And now we're gonna have a look at the uh, battery thing, but after coffee. Okay, so this boat currently has uh, three batteries. It has the, the main battery bank sitting down here. And this is a 120 amp hour gel battery from Exxon. Then in the uh, rear cabin there, underneath the uh, cover is the starter battery. And then we have the, of course, the uh, power thruster battery out there. So originally, I had two uh, 70 amp hour battery here installed from the factory. And they were sitting here in the engine compartment. And my uh, slight knowledge about batteries is that it's not very good to have your battery sitting in a uh, engine compartment that might be, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees warm sometimes, and then uh, other times quite cold. So I don't like the battery sitting here. So the plan is that this big battery is going to be moved over and sitting. Say, there's a big compartment there. So it's gonna be there nice and cold. Um, I'm gonna have more access here in the in the engine compartment. It's not like a huge deal, but it's still when I'm doing the winterizing and chasing the belt, it's, it's kind of like a bit in the way. So um, that's gonna be a project. And to do so, there's of course a lot of cabling I has to have to change. They are running, so it's sitting down there below the engine. Uh, they're running over here. You have the main switch sitting in here. Let's go behind underneath the uh, oven the fridge to uh, pull them in there but I think it's it's, it's definitely doable and it's going to be a much much better solution and if you guys have any kind of uh, comments about the best way to do this battery setup because as far as I know I can't have a this is gel type battery there it's AGM out there and I have a starter battery down there which is normal uh, lead acid um, so I can't combine the AGM and the gel battery because it's both different um, capacities, it's different chemistry, so I can't have them in parallel. I think that's a very bad idea. And that's why I did the Victron thing up there with the DC DC charger. But ideally, because when I'm charging the, the battery up in the uh, in the bow there, I have to manually turn switch to turn on the uh, DC DC charger, and that's a bit hassle if you forget it and you know it would be much easier just to uh, you know leave the boat the solar panel is going to charge both batteries also when I plug in the shore power charge both batteries so I think I need a uh, battery isolator I can charge them independently and then um, also use them independently because I don't want when I'm using the the bow thrust up there or the winch the winch is probably going to be connected up there as I told earlier um, I don't want to draw power from the uh, from the uh, gel battery down here. So please let me know if you have any kind of uh, comments or 
good ideas in this one. And for another project, I'm gonna have to use this light here. So, follow me here in the rear cabin. This boat has a uh, fixed uh, drive shaft and it's a Yanmar uh, engine. And um, I have a slight oil leak, so the gearbox is sitting down there. And as I can tell, um, it's leaking from the gearbox where the shaft goes into the coupler. Um, I found some resources on the internet that states that might be a just a seal I have to um, to change. But of course on boats nothing is as easy as you would think. And you can actually see there's a tiny bit of oil down there. And if I put my finger here, I'm pretty sure I can feel some yes there you got it and the um i mean of course i could just ignore this but what's happening is that the um the oil drips down there and um it goes in the uh in a small channel that's in the uh, in the interval and goes down to the belch so in the belch of course you always have a bit of water apparently you have water there and it's always oily um which is just like i don't like it it's a bit just just looks wrong to have oil, oil leaking. I haven't really been able to see it, like the oil missing from the from the from the gearbox there. So it's I think it's a tiny tiny leak, but still it's uh, something that needs to be fixed. I really hope I don't have to pull out the entire gearbox from the motor. But maybe it's actually going to be the easiest part just to take the gearbox off the uh, the motor itself than trying to fiddle around with that little uh, seal down there. Um, yeah. So um, that's going to be another project for the winter. So so far, just summarize, we're going to do some battery thingy. We're going to do some uh, engine thing. And what else is that I'm hoping for some Black Friday sale with a radar, maybe. It's going to be fun. Uh, my lovely wife, Simona, she, of course, wants to do some things for the bathroom. Um, so you want a huge mirror here. And uh, then we're also going to do some shower shops um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please uh, if you liked it please uh, give it a like and uh, if you have any comments just uh, write them down there and any questions I'll try to answer them and uh, you can also subscribe to this channel that's gonna help a lot it's always good to see so uh, until next time see you and take care bye bye